Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that new Flash Season 2 footage from yesterday. So, kind of continuing with the DC theme, I thought we'd do some Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad today. A lot of you have been asking me about the Suicide Squad Joker theory. I've kind of explained it before, but I'll explain why I think it's bogus at the end of this. Really, I wanted to talk about General Zod because Michael Shannon was talking about the movie. Batman v Superman, that is. I mean, he just confirmed that that is him in the trailer. They didn't use a body double. It's, it's not CG. He was actually on set pretending to be dead. If you remember in the trailer, it just, it looks like LexCorp is going to get a hold of his body and use it to make this green rock, or at least learn what Kryptonians are weak against. We really don't know where the kryptonite comes from, but we can guess that it probably has something to do with the terraformers from Man of Steel. You know, the funny thing is, is even though this all seems really planned out and there's this clear roadmap to Justice League, Whenever they started working on Man of Steel, they, they hadn't thought about it that way. They were just intending to make a new Superman franchise. It, it was going to be self-contained. They weren't going to cross it over with Batman or anything like that. But I think given the success of Avengers and the, the shared universe, they kind of opened Warner Brothers' minds. They said, okay, you know, we'll, we'll give it a try. So Batman v Superman is probably like part of the pitch that came from Zack Snyder after Warner Brothers went to him and said, hey, we're thinking about doing this movie with Batman in it. What, you know, do you have any ideas? So they're spinning all these movies logically out of the previous ones. So like in the wake of what happened in Man of Steel, between Zod and Superman, Batman v Superman picks up and continues the thread. So big alien battle, kills a bunch of people, does billions of dollars in damage. What do the Earthlings do? The Senate gets involved, and then people like Lex Luthor, who are a little more paranoid, a little crazier, get their hands on it and say, okay, you know, we're going to do something about these aliens. We're going to get rid of them. Just because it's Jesse Eisenberg, everyone's thinking like evil Mark Zuckerberg because Lex Corp is going to be a tech giant in this movie. But really, he's more of like a crazy version of Elon Musk and Mark Cuban. I guess you could throw Facebook in there. I'm, I'm sure social media will play a role in what's going on in this universe because it, it is supposed to be present day. So there are going to be a bunch of YouTube clips of Superman fighting Zod that just like random citizens uploaded. But really, I don't, I don't think of Mark Zuckerberg as a billionaire industrialist tech giant. If there are any billionaire mad scientists in the real world, I would say Elon Musk is the closest to that. I, I don't think of him as evil though, but I just, I like the idea. Just because he's making Apple jealous with his Tesla business. They're, they're actually making an Apple car now because of what Tesla is doing. So Michael Shannon, just doing regular interviews, talked a little bit about Batman v Superman on the set, but he said one of the weirdest things ever that just like stopped me dead in my tracks. He said that he got stuck in a porta potty because his hands were fixed with flippers. He's like, I have flipper hands in the movie. And that almost made me fall out of my chair. I was like, okay, wait a minute. What, what the hell is he talking about? Flipper hands? How the hell do you get from fight with Superman to flipper hands? So first off, we just have to acknowledge that there's just like so much going on in that comment. One, how did he get into the porta potty with flipper hands? And how did he get his Kryptonian suit off if he couldn't work the zippers? Ben Affleck actually ran into Christian Bale after Ben Affleck had been named as Batman. It was just some random run-in when they were out with their families. Ben Affleck said that Christian Bale told him, make sure that you can piss in this suit because it is a bitch to get off. So already your mind is spinning about how he got locked in this porta potty, but someone let him out. Zack Snyder stopped yelling. He's like, where's Michael Shannon? Where the hell is he? But let's think about these flipper hands and green glowing rocks. What I think is going on is I think they just put prosthetics on his fingers just to keep him from wiggling around too much. Just, just to keep him prone because he's supposed to be dead. They're not going to bring him back to life. He's got to be sitting on a research table while people poke him and try to figure out what he's weak against. So Lex Luthor probably found some alien soil samples in all the rubble left from the terraformers. So he's probably experimenting on that and probably finds out that when he gets close to Zod that his body starts to break down a little bit. The thing about kryptonite though is that it's actually irradiated pieces of krypton. It's not just like regular earth rocks from krypton. So he probably just like slowly gets to that point as he's experimenting with Zod's body. So hopefully that clarifies that a little bit. I just, I saw a couple people wondering, they're like, is he going to get spliced with like Atlantean DNA? Is it going to be like Atlantean hybrid Zod? N no, I do not think that that's going to happen. There are a lot of people wondering if there's going to be a version of Doomsday in the movie, because I mean, you have to have like the big, big bad. I mean, Batman and Superman are going to be fighting. Wonder Woman's going to get caught in the middle. So they'll be each other's villains for like the first part of the movie. But there has to be a real villain, like someone for Superman and Batman to punch together. That could be something that comes out of Lex Corp's lab. But the weird thing about these like Batman v Superman universe movies is, is they're, they're trying to make them as close to real life as possible. Like, like if an alien came from outer space, how would the world react? So I'm not expecting too many fantastical comic booky things. Zack Snyder actually said that when they wrote the script, they just they went into a room and came up with it on their own. 
He's a big fan of Frank Miller's, but the story of Batman v Superman has absolutely nothing to do with The Dark Knight Returns. Maybe a couple of visual Easter eggs, like that's about it. So if you saw people going crazy about flipper hands odd on social this morning, don't, don't worry. But people are still talking about the Suicide Squad, you know, Joker, Jason, Todd rumor. So I'm going to clarify that just a little bit, like what the actual rumor is, why people think it's a thing, and why I think it's bogus. I'll start off by saying that it is totally awesome to come up with theories like this. Fan theories are what makes talking about movies fun. Just as long as you remember that it's a crackpot theory that's just fun to play around with. It's just meant to be fun. So if you're not familiar with Jason Todd, he is the person that became Robin after Dick Grayson became Nightwing, like after he went off to Teen Titans a long, long, long time ago. Now, Jason Todd was not a super popular character, so his time as Robin was really short. And because comics started to get really hardcore, they wanted to introduce a new Robin. So they're like, okay, let's do the most hardcore thing ever. We'll kill Jason Todd. So it became this big Joker story about how the Joker tortured and killed him. And then way, way later in the comics, because, you know, Batman had started to get boring as a comic, they're like, okay, let's make this interesting. Let's bring back a big villain that is someone from Batman's past. Someone who used to be really close to him that blames him for what happened. So they introduced the Red Hood character, and it turned out that it was Jason Todd who was not dead. He had been resurrected. He went on to become this crazy anti-hero that is kind of a good character, but kind of not. If you think that Wolverine is chaotic good, think of Red Hood as being even more chaotic good. But when he first came along, like, he really wanted to kick the shit out of Batman. So Jason Todd, as a story device, is the character that you bring out when Batman is riding high and you want to tear him down. And the problem with Jason Todd in the movie universe right now is that when we see Batman in the trailer, he is already at his lowest point. He's been retired for a while. He hasn't worn the cape and cowl in a long time. He's still haunted by what happened to this Robin. We're not really sure which version of Robin this is going to be. And to bring in Jason Todd this soon would really undermine that arc because we're supposed to get to Justice League. So arguably Batman is going to find some sort of redemption between now and the end of Batman v Superman. So if we do see Jason Todd in the movie universe, or like a version of him, then we probably won't see him till the new Batman trilogy. It's just, they've already announced the first Batman solo film that Ben Affleck is going to actually co-write and direct. It'll probably end up turning into a new trilogy, depending on how things go and how long Ben Affleck wants to stay with the role. But the reason that people think that Jared Leto's Joker might be Jason Todd is because of the tattoos. Like he has, you know, he has a bunch of tattoos on him. He has a tattoo of a Robin that we've seen in promo art. And then the video game Arkham Knight ended up using the Jason Todd character who also had some tattoos that were similar. But here's the problem with that. Here's the reason that that evidence doesn't stack up. Because the video games are not canon to the movies. They're two completely different teams. They have nothing to do with each other. Like the people that make the games, they watch the movies, like they listen to the news, but they don't base their game story on what's going on in the movies or in the comics. They just take a group of characters and try to tell an interesting story with them. And, and, and obviously the Arkham games kind of provide their own continuity. Like they're all, they're all connected all the way from Arkham Asylum to Arkham Knight. It's kind of like a trilogy. People also saw the Suicide Squad trailer and they saw this person on Joker's table and they're like, oh, maybe we're going to see Jason Todd. That's actually Harley Quinn. We're going to see the Harley Quinn origin in the movie. She's the one lying there when he's saying, I'm not going to kill you. I'm just going to hurt you real, real bad. So that doesn't mean that we'll never see Jason Todd in the movie universe. I mean, the Jason Todd storyline is super, super dark, and the movies are trying to be super, super dark. So thematically it would work, but I mean, Batman really has to like get his first redemption before you tear him back down again. Like it can't be completely depressing the entire time. He has to have a couple big victories. Jason Todd is the character that you roll out after Batman's had a couple big victories. The world thinks of him in a really positive way. So Jason Todd comes out and goes, look what you've done. You know, look what the consequences are of your actions. But you guys can let me know, you know, what do you think about this Jason Todd theory? Do you think that it's bogus? Just remember that most of the evidence people are using to support it is based on the Arkham video game series, which I think is already like a giant red flag that the people are trying to connect the video games to the movies. But that's just been my experience in the past. And for people wondering about the Arkham game franchise, the game company is probably going to be making a new Superman franchise. Just get really hype about a super dark Superman video game trilogy coming. But that, that remains to be seen. They haven't officially announced it yet. Just because like a whole bunch of stuff happened, you know, a bunch of flash footage, Batman v Superman stuff happening this week. If you guys want me to do like a, like a DC Q&A, just let me know and let me know what you want the Q&A to be about just so I know which questions to pick. 
Also coming up, this Sunday, Fear the Walking Dead starts. I will do a bonus video before it. I'm going to do weekly videos, so just look out for that. The Vixen cartoon is premiering next Tuesday on CW Seed. I'll also be doing weekly bonus videos for that too. I'll just, I'll remind everyone before it airs. I already know I'm going to be doing a Walking Dead giveaway. I'll probably do some kind of giveaway for the Vixen premiere too. So be sure to subscribe so you guys don't miss any of that stuff. So while you guys wait for that stuff to post, you can click here to watch that flash footage that I posted yesterday. It's just like a really short clip, so we'll get a longer one pretty soon. And you can click here to learn all about the Captain America Civil War footage from D23. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tomorrow.